Captain Zornith stood at attention on the viewing deck, mandibles clamped tight to his face as he watched the sleek alien spacecraft roar past the observation window. The strange bipedal pilot inside waved casually as he put the experimental craft through another series of wild gyrations that no Valkyrie would ever dare attempt. In all my cycles, I've never seen such reckless abandon, Zornith muttered. His second in command, Lieutenant Voret, shuddered beside him, her antennae vibrating with anxiety. The human acts as if his own life means nothing. No Valkyrie would take such risks just to show off. The human spacecraft was the newest joint project between their peoples. Sleek and silvery, with adjustable geometry wings, it represented the pinnacle of both human and Valkyrie aeronautical engineering. The spacecraft's unique design allowed for exceptional maneuverability to utilize the strengths of both species. The Valkyrie contributed unmatched precision, craftsmanship, and a knack for optimization. The humans brought creativity, fearlessness, and an almost manic urge to push boundaries. During flight trials, human test pilots had taken the experimental craft far beyond its expected performance thresholds, much to the dismay of their Valkyrie designers. The lead engineer nearly had a panic attack when she saw the first human take the craft into a steep vertical climb before spinning backwards into an aggressive dive, blasting the afterburners as he pulled up mere meters above the tarmac. The brass had brought Captain Zornet's elite flight squadron to this testing facility for a first-hand look at human daring. Thus far, the display had been utterly unnerving. The alien pilot rolled his ship inverted, accelerating towards the observation deck. Zornet's antennae rigidified as the ship raced towards them, holding the inverted position impossibly close to the ground. At the last possible moment, the pilot flipped upright, the variable wings articulating themselves into an aggressive knife-edge flight configuration as the spacecraft screamed past the windows in a shockwave-inducing blur. By the Empress Verret gasped. How does he maintain control at those speeds? Any Valkyrie pilot would have crashed trying to maneuver that way. Captain Zornith had seen enough. He stormed off the observation deck towards the human staging area, followed anxiously by his subordinates. Perhaps it was time for a direct intervention before their human allies got themselves killed, showing off these ridiculous stunts. Upon arriving at the open-air hangar, they were greeted by more casual irreverence. The human pilot they had been watching, callsign Cowboy was sprawled out in a chair, hat tipped low over his eyes as he slapped his thigh in laughter. Nearby, maintenance crews were swarming over various aircraft in disorderly flocks blaring chaotic earth music from their equipment instead of displaying proper discipline. Zornith cited the senior human present, a female designated Captain Sparrow by the embroidered insignia on her flight suit. He approached and offered a curt warrior salute. Captain, my squadron has grave concerns over Cowboy's reckless maneuvering of the X-12B prototype craft. We believe further testing at these risk thresholds endangers both craft and pilot unnecessarily. Captain Sparrow gave Zornith an affable grin and winked. Lighten up, bird bug. Cowboy's just having a little fun showing off for you scale heads. Haven't lost a pilot or aircraft yet. Oh well, Cowboy knows his limits. Zornith bristled at the casual nicknames. Fun? Those maneuvers exceed any safe parameters. How can you allow such recklessness? Captain Sparrow laughed. It's getting results, ain't it? Your fancy pants engineers designed the X-12B prototype with way too much safety margin. They'd have spent months timidly easing up towards 60, maybe even 70% throttle in the simulator before ever flexing her wings for real. Cowboy's been tearing. Around at over 100, even 120% all morning. She clapped Zorneth on the back like they were old wingmates while he stiffened in shock. How? That's impossible. The structural integrity fields alone. You birds got good math, but you ain't got no guts, cowboy drawled, sauntering over with a swagger. All that big brains, but too scared to open her up and see what she can do. He eyed Zornet's immaculate uniform with good-natured amusement. You got too much discipline hammered into ya yeah as fledglings. Relax. Where's that famous Valkyrie precision now? Zornet blinked unsure how to process the bizarre human philosophy. Cowboy waved a hand airily. Ah, hell. 
instead of flapping your mandibles, why not hop in with me next sortie? I'll show you what this baby can really do. Captain Sparrow nodded eagerly. Now that's using your noggin. First round's on me tonight if you can keep down Yao lunch afterwards. Zornith wavered, then drew himself up resolutely as a squadron leader of the Valkyrie Aerospace Force. It would be my honor to accompany you into the sky, cowboy. The cockpit was not designed to accommodate a Valkyrie, but Zornith managed to wedge himself into the second seat as Cowboy went through abbreviated pre-flight checks with alarming speed. The canopy slid down and Zornith suddenly felt trapped, sealed in this tiny bubble of atmosphere hurtling through an alien sky. Cowboy fired the engines with a devilish yell and taxied onto the runway. Zornith had just enough time to properly strap himself in before the pilot throttled up and the experimental fighter rocketed forward with neck-snapping acceleration. The crushing force of their rapid climb pinned Zornith to his seat as Cowboy sent them roaring into the bright blue heavens. At the apex of their ascent, the aggressive human rolled them inverted, engines blazing as he pushed the fighter into a dizzying split S corkscrew dive. Zornith's antennae whipped back from the blistering descent as he fought to keep his equilibrium. His multi-lensed eyes struggled to compensate for the visual chaos as battle-honed reflexes took over. He realized he was shrieking alarm cries on the open comm channel and clamped his mandibles shut. How could Cowboy remain so calm piloting this uncontrollable beast while Zornith felt barely in control of his own faculties? They leveled out mere meters above the canyon floor. The variable wings extended outwards for maximum lift over the rocky terrain as Cowboy threw them recklessly around crags and overhangs. He whooped wildly, firing thrusters to flip them under stone arches and loop backwards around spiraling rock formations. Somehow, the human held everything together, handling the fighter like an extension of his own body as they blasted through the canyons at impossible velocities. Zornith felt an unfamiliar sensation creeping into his rigid posture. The human's daring, his sheer wild abandoned qualities. Valkyrie aces were selected and conditioned from hatchlings to do a specific job were instead sources of almost supernatural ability. This unruly chaotic bite was attaining performance levels that Zornis genome screened, rigorously trained elite pilots could scarcely comprehend, let alone match. Somehow, in letting go of orderly discipline and embracing improvisational risk, the human achieved the sublime. This unkempt, irreverent creature was the embodiment of precision danger, attuned beyond any Valkyrie to the rhythms of turbulence swirling around him. They burst from the canyons back into open sky. Yeehaw bellowed Cowboy, clearly relishing Zornit's breathless reactions, ready to really open her up. Zornit could barely respond before those unpredictable primate hands slammed the throttles to the stops. The G-forces tried to crush breath and consciousness from the Valkyrie officer in a vice-like grip. Only the liquid rippling of his multi-chambered eyes allowed sight recognition as the fighter accelerated vertically, the visual signature tearing itself to pieces around an impossible center point of stillness where Cowboy sat, master of the maelstrom. At the edge of the stratosphere they hung, crucified between towering cliffs of cloud and the ground's distant patchwork. Zornith swore he could see the immense curve of the planet falling away before them. Insanely, Cowboy chose this moment of trembling balance between worlds to release the throttles. They plunged back towards the land, the human's high hysterical laughter echoing in Zornith's antennae through the torrent of air. Cowboy let the X-12 fall freely, wings still extended but leading edge raised as air brakes, the only control against their terminal plunge as the land raced up to pulverize them. Zornith knew they were dead. He felt an unfamiliar sensation, not fear, but profound exhilaration. He would perish as no Valkyrie had before, not with rigid discipline behind flight controls, but wild and unrestrained beside this unimaginable creature who laughed in the face of gravity itself. It was, in the end, a good way to die. Mere meters above the ground, Cowboy slammed the engines to full power. The variable wings rotated forward, greedily clawing at the thick carpet of air. Their descent reversed into a blistering, rooster-tailing climb, thundering back skyward as Zornith gloried in the raw forces pinning him down. As they relaxed, the Valkyrie captain became aware his antennae were fully fanned in aggressive aerial display posture, mandibles wide as if challenging the universe itself. 
Alien endorphins saturated his system, evoking ancestral memories of swooping primordial hunts. Cowboy banked them gently, letting the fighter glide across the landing approach. So think you could handle her the human grinned, nodding at the controls. Zorneth slowly smoothed down his antennae as they touched back to a graceful landing. Perhaps not to your extremes, cowboy he conceded, still getting his bearings. But I believe that is no longer the point. They debriefed in the hangar, Zorneth's subordinates gathering around him anxiously. But instead of dressing down cowboy's behavior as expected, their commander began issuing unusual orders. Lieutenant Verrett, have our maintenance teams remove governor limiters on all squadron craft. We will require full manual override of envelope protections. Vorek goggled in astonishment. Sir, but the risks. Let me worry about that, Lieutenant Zorneth said, antennae already perking up with anticipation. In fact, clear next week's duty rosters entirely. I want all pilots ready to brush up on combat maneuvering. He eyed cowboy allowing his mouth parts to gape eagerly. The humans have much to teach us about, adapting to the unexpected, and I believe our squadron will soon demonstrate how Valkyrie precision can meet human daring head-on.